from there. I just had a, a, a rabbi um, give me an analogy. He said, look, imagine you left your home and then someone came and occupied it and then you try to get it back and then they went to the judge. Have you heard some of these analogies? Maybe you can... You can yeah, I, that's assuming that, you know, that's, that's, that's taking it into a place which I, I don't usually go. That's making the assumption that today's Jews are really the descendants of the ancient Hebrews that used to live in that part of the world some 3,000 years ago. That's a, that's a, that's a bit of a stretch for me. Um, mm -hmm. And even if it was true, I don't think it... Uh, I, I agree with him. It doesn't justify... You know, I did not live there 3,000 years ago. My grandparents immigrated from, from, from Ukraine. Their parents, their grandparents didn't live there. And I don't know any Jew that can trace his or her ancestors back to the ancient Hebrews. So that's a lot of, you know, that's a lot of, uh, a lot of myth there. Uh, but they claim they want to build the temple. Now, I want to discuss a little bit of sensitive history. And if I go to sensitive history, well, then I must quote sources that say it rather than that I say it. This is a fascinating book, and the web pages are there, you can check it out. Facts are facts. This is a book that was written by a Jewish man. And he confronted the thinking of many of the high placed individuals of the world. This is interesting stuff. In this book, Benjamin H. Friedman, a Jewish man, writes about the Jews and reveals an interesting history. He states that the present Jews in Palestine are not the true descendants of the Judeans, but rather descendants of the Khazars. In the letter addressed to D. David Goldstein, of Boston, Massachusetts, a convert to Catholicism. The author, Benjamin Friedman of New York City, dated October 1954, provides some fascinating insights. This is in the public domain. Let's study this for a while and see where we get. Benjamin H. Friedman claims that the word Jew was only introduced into the English language in the 18th century and that Jesus referred to himself as a Judean and not as a Jew. Inscribed upon the cross when Jesus was crucified were the Latin words Iesus Nazarenus Rex Iodeorum, which means Jesus of Nazareth, ruler of the Judeans. Now this is fascinating. I went and checked it. And it is so. <laughs> yes, it happens to be so. Now the word Jew today has a religious as well as a political connotation. You think of a Jewish entity, a government, but you also think of their religion incorporated at the same time. Whereas the term Judean is a geographic connotation. It's a geographic, it doesn't incorporate the religion. It's where he came from. He was from Judah. He was a Judean. He further writes, the form of religious worship known as Phariseeism in Judea in the time of Jesus was a religious practice based exclusively upon the Talmud. The Talmud in the time of Jesus was the Magna Carta, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, all rolled into one of those who practiced Phariseeism. The Talmud today occupies the same relative position with respect to those who profess Judaism. So the rituals and rites that many of them observed were based on the Talmud and not on the Torah. Rabbi Morris, this is all from the source, Rabbi Morris in Kurtzer wrote a most revealing and comprehensive article with the title, What is a Jew? which was published as a feature article in Look magazine in June 17, 1952 issue. In that article, Rabbi Morris Kurtzer evaluated the significance of the Talmud to Judaism today. In that illuminating treatise and that important subject, by the most qualified authority at the time, Rabbi Morris N. Kurtzer stated, 
The Talmud consists of 63 books of legal, ethical, and historical writings of the ancient rabbis. It was edited five centuries after the birth of Jesus. It is a compendium of law and lore. It is the legal code which forms the basis of the Jewish religious law, and it is, note, the textbook used in the training of rabbis. So rabbis are trained according to the Talmud. And the Talmud has very little in common with the Bible. As to the origin of the present Jews in Palestine, he states that those Jews derived from Eastern Europe and many, many of the Jews that today live in the reconstituted state of Israel come from Eastern Europe are not descendants of the Judeans or the lost tribes of Israel but rather descendants of the Khazars who were they? they were a nation most people do not even know of he writes the so called self styled Jews in Eastern Europe in modern history cannot legitimately point to a single ancient ancestor who ever set even a foot on the soil of Palestine in the era of Bible history. Research also revealed that the so-called or self-styled Jews in Eastern Europe were never Semites, are not Semites now, nor can they ever be regarded as Semites at any future time by any stretch of the imagination. What secret mysterious power has been able for countless generations to keep the origin and the history of the Khazars and the Khazar kingdom out of the history textbooks. Did you ever learn about it at school? I never learned about it. And out of classroom courses in history throughout the world, the origin and the history of Khazars and the Khazar kingdom are certainly incontestable historical facts. You have to do some cross-checking. Even the Jewish encyclopedia is quite explicit about it. This was the Khazar kingdom. Here is the Black Sea, the Byzantine Empire, here was Persia, and here was the kingdom of the Khazars. It was a massive kingdom. Now let's look at some of this interesting history. The Khazars were an Asiatic nation, and the Jewish encyclopedia states Persian origin that converted to Talmudic Judaism. And that had conquered a vast area of Eastern Europe, which was in turn later conquered by the Russians in the 10th and 13th century. So that is why there are so many Russian Jews. Have you ever thought where they came from? Did they escape from Palestine? Were they the lost 10 tribes? Did they emigrate to Russia? No. This is a totally different nation that accepted Talmudic Judaism. Judaism. He writes... After a historic session with representatives of the three monotheistic religions, King Bulan, 7th century, 7th century, decided against Christian and Islam, because Islam had just arisen, just arisen, and selected as the future state religion the religious worship then known as Talmudism, and not known and practiced as Judaism was totally different which was based on the Bible they adopted the Hebrew alphabet and the Khazars adapted words to their requirements from the German the Slavonic and the Baltic languages this language was known as Yiddish and Yiddish used the Hebrew alphabetic characters but not Hebrew it's not Hebrew it's Yiddish I've always wondered when I hear them speaking Yiddish, I understand quite a few words. Why? Because I'm German. They had many exchanges with universities and their students were trained. So here is another nation which had occupied this area and they had adopted this religion and brought rabbis in and trained the people. But they were not Judean. Stop being defensive. Hi, Shalom Shalom from Israel. This is Ola, the daughter of Jethro. 
And I just heard that you black people that was stolen from Africa to America, that you don't know who you are, but you are the children of, of Yahweh, the children of Israel. And I'm telling you, you have to come back to your homeland, here to Zion, to Jerusalem, because us the Gentiles, we do need you. We need you to come and pray because you are our saviors. You the one that was chosen by Yahweh to live in this land, not the Jewish people, it's you. You were stolen from Africa, they deceived you, they told you that you are slaves, but you actually the children of Israel. And it's time just to come, come back. Come for, for, for your people, come back for us, come back for the whole Gentiles because only you, only you gonna save us. So please come back. Are you